afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is John Risky. I'm the Director of Business Development at Zencoder. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about um, kind of optimizing uh, workflow for video processing in the cloud. And part of that is um, solving the bandwidth problem that's associated with dealing with these large uh, files in the cloud. As Janesh so eloquently um, put it, video is one of the, um, the, the sets of big data that we're talking about today in a, in a um, cloud-based world. So Zencoder is an API-based video transcoding service that's built on top of the AWS cloud. So as a consumer of uh, AWS services, we use EC2 for compute power, which is the actual transcoding processing itself. And we use S3 uh, to stage um, the video transcoding process. So um, if customers don't have an S3 bucket of their own, they can upload to a, a staging ground where we can pull that file. But many of our customers do uh, use S3 for storage. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, 50 or 60% uh, use S3 today for storage. So we really uh, run the gamut in terms of customers that utilize our, our service, um, similar to uh, what you see with, with Amazon Web Services as a whole. Um, the ability to, um, to uh, prototype and deploy, quickly deploy applications has helped um, services like TwitVid, which is the largest video sharing application uh, on Twitter, get up and running with very little to no capex for video transcoding. And we also service customers like Scripps Networks Interactive, uh, which is the food network, uh, professional uh, content producers for the internet like Funny or Die, and uh, other uh, broadcasters like uh, PBS. So what does a typical workflow look like uh, for a customer that utilizes Zencoder services? Um, in the case of PBS, um, they start out with a, with a mezzanine or a, a file that they're going to send up to the cloud. They submit an API request to our service, which then initiates uh, a transfer of that file uh, via FTP, HTTP, could be over Direct Connect. Uh, um, it, this is not a, an API call, but you could use physical import to get the file up to uh, the cloud or Aspera. And once that file is, is, is up in the cloud, uh, we can kick off our transcoding processes, which as kind of a microcosm of all of the advantages that have been discussed today of the, of the cloud, it's fast, it's parallel, it's secure, and it's high scale, and it's in pretty much infinitely or, or very, very high, uh, high scale and um, transparent in that scalability, so automatic scaling to um, handle any load. Once that transcoding process is complete, uh, th that file is then transferred via FTP, HTTP, uh, Direct Connect, or Aspera back to S3 or an origin server or an, any other host that uh, a content provider would like to use, ultimately for delivery to all of the different formats um, and, and codecs that are necessary in a contemporary world, uh, Silverlight, Flash, HTML5, and iOS, um, for the myriad of internet-connected devices on which people want to consume c content today. So as you might imagine, uh, we, are, we are zealots on the fact that video encoding belongs in the cloud. Why is that? Well, we can take a quick look at a day part graph uh, of PBS usage of, of our service. So you can see at certain parts of the day, 9 a.m. in this instance, um, there is uh, a peak usage um, that, that spikes. Uh, the average uh, drops down uh, thereafter. And the cloud is, is, is very rapidly able to scale to meet the demands and scales down in order to, um, in order to uh, spin down those instances and, um, and ultimately save money when those resources aren't in use. So what, do, what kinds of problems um, do we face uh, with, with video transcoding as a process? Um, it's a tautology to say it, but large files are large. So looking at um, a typical um, input format that you might find in the broadcast or um, Hollywood post-production world, 
We've got DNX HD uh, on the left-hand column there, and one hour of DNX HD is almost 16 gigabytes. And that only scales up from there to ProRes 4444, um, which tops out at 145 gigabytes per hour. So does it make sense to transfer large files to the cloud for processing? What I'd like to suggest today is that it does, and I'm going to give four tips for um, realizing the, the grace efficiency that the cloud has to offer for this process. So the first of these um, is making sure that, um, um, that, you're, that you have a fast connection. And so uh, first what I'd like to show is um, at a gigabit per second with a 10 millisecond delay and 10% uh, packet loss, you're really only hitting a TCP um, uh, limit of 21.8 megabits per second. So with these file types, DNX, HD, and the rest, you know, you're looking at hours for transfer. And this is a problem. As you can see, we're, we're, we're talking multiples of hours, or multiples of the ultimate, um, uh, uh, of the, the file size. So fortunately, we have these, uh, th these tips. So the first of these is to use accelerated file transfer to overcome uh, the barriers of TCP uh, based transfer. So on a one gigabit per second connection with a 10 millisecond delay and 10% packet loss, with something like Aspera, you're still able to achieve 509 megabits per second. So we take a look at that list again, and you're going from hours um, to, in, in the case of DNX HD, uh, single digit minutes to um, you know, less than an hour for the highest resolution video types. Now the second of these is to store your video close to processing. And storing your video close to processing, in our case, means uh, utilizing Amazon S3. So one of the, th one of the great things about using, <laughs> should we wait? All right, so one of the things about uh, using Amazon S3, uh, in our case, is that we see amazing throughput from Amazon S3 to, uh, to Zencoder. So in the case of uh, DNX HD, you know, you're seeing transfer from, um, from S3 to Zencoder at one gigabit per second, uh, which is in, again, the low, the low single digits. So another tip here is to ingest once to S3 and, and use the power of the cloud to encode in parallel. So one way to think about this is that the net transfer time of each individual file that is, up, that is being outputted equals the total transfer time divided by the number of encodes that you're producing. So those, those of you that are um, filtering in, thanks for sticking around. I'm, I'm assuming that this means that you're die-hard video transcoding. <laughs> the die-hard video transcoding fans in the crowd, I like that. So we were talking about kind of um, um, a, a bit of a paradigm shift in, in how you think about uh, transfer time up to the cloud, which is you know, net transfer time per output is really, a, is, is really the, the, um, the transfer time divided by the number of outputs that you're doing. So if you have 30, uh, 30 minutes of, of upload, for, uh, for instance, uh, divided by 10 encodes for, for your outputs, that really um, translates to three minutes per encode. So if we're talking about 10 outputs, you know, you're looking at, um, at, at double digit seconds per encode of output. You know, dropping down to 10 seconds uh, per encode uh, in the case of DNX uh, HD uh, for transfer at 25 outputs. Now you might be wondering what in the world would you do with 25 outputs, but that's not an uncommon um, thing in a world where there's myriad um, connected devices and uh, myriad formats uh, as kind of a multiplier that you have to transcode to in order to hit all those different devices. So, uh, for example, I want to talk quickly about uh, uh, ABC I-50, uh, which at one hour is 22 gigabytes, to 10 encodes, and assume that we're um, encoding at 2x real time. So if you um, are working on that job on-premise and uh, serially, you're looking at about five hours to encode that video to 10 outputs. Uh, in the cloud, with par uh, in parallel, uh, doing all those 10 outputs in parallel with a TCP connection, you're looking at 2.8 hours. For 10 outputs, using the cloud with parallel uh, outputs and a Spera, you're looking at 36 minutes. 
which is 8x faster than doing it serially on-premise. So the fourth tip is you should transfer to S3 once, and only once, and ultimately deliver from the cloud. John Mancuso will talk more next about, uh, about using Amazon Web Services for delivery, but I just want to touch on this first because ultimately um, this can contribute to uh, greater bandwidth efficiencies for your data center or for your, your local on-premise um, operations. So if you have that ABC i50 file at 22 gigabytes and you're doing 12 web and mobile outputs, um, uh, which transcodes down to about 15 gigabytes, you know, your net transfer for that file is still 30% larger than your outputs. However, in a world where you have to do all this syndication, if you have that video in the cloud, you do that initial encode, but then you have to syndicate to additional web locations, mobile locations, or syndicate to YouTube, Hulu, uh, Netflix, et cetera, et cetera. You know, you're talking upwards of 200 gigabytes uh, for all those output files. So that's, that initial transfer is actually 9x less bandwidth that you're consuming uh, on that, uh, to get that file up to the cloud, transferred, and then ultimately out to an audience um, either through something like CloudFront or through other syndication points like YouTube or Hulu. So with that, I'm going to close uh, by reiterating these four points. So first, store your video close to video processing. Use accelerated file transfer to get it there. Ingest once and only once and encode in parallel to achieve maximum efficiency uh, on the encodes. Uh, and then once you have that video up in the cloud, deliver it from the cloud to achieve efficiencies uh, as far as the bandwidth is concerned. You don't have to do all four to, um, to, to, to get efficiencies out of the process. But, uh, as I've kind of shown, these all have a cascading or multiplicative effect with one another where the more processes that you, uh, that you undertake in the cloud, the more efficiencies you can gain. So what does this all yield? It yields faster transcoding, uh, faster time to market, less bandwidth usage at your on-premise location, and better ROI, which is what we're all after. So with that, uh, thanks for your time. Uh, you can find me afterwards if you have any additional questions. Uh, and since I don't scale well, um, <laughs> unlike Amazon Web Services, you can find me online uh, at those various contact points. Thank you for your time.